The ZBook Fury G9 is HP's flagship mobile workstation for creators and professionals. New Intel Order Lake 55 Watt HX processors, 16 inch 16 by 10 displays, up to RTX A5500 and Radeon Pro W6600M GPUs, DDR5-4800 memory and 12 terabytes of storage available. Is the Fury G9 up to snuff? Let's find out. There are subtle design changes to the Fury G9 compared to its predecessor, the G8. Similar to the Studio G9 I reviewed, the chassis has moved away from sharp edges to rounded corners along the sides and bottom cover, making the Fury look more stylish even though it's a workhorse workstation. Starting at 2.39 kilograms or 5.27 pounds, with a 29 millimeter or 1.14 inches military standard 810H tested chassis profile, the G9 is well built with zero flexing on the keyboard deck and minimum flexing on the display lid. The Fury was designed first and foremost to offer maximum upgrade options and accommodate desktop level components. If you are after a thinner mobile workstation to carry around, look at its sibling, the ZBook Studio G9. The bottom vent grille takes up half the surface area of the cover to ensure plenty of airflow for the vapour chamber cooling. More on that later. It's worth mentioning HP's sustainability policy, where the chassis is made up of up to 30% recycled plastics, up to 50% recycled metals, and 5% ocean-bound plastics. Great to see manufacturers moving in this direction. To open the bottom cover, slide the surface door latch to the release position. If a security screw is installed, remove it at this stage. Slide the surface door towards the front and lift the surface door off of the base enclosure and remove. To remove or add the SSDs, remove the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the copper bracket to the base enclosure. Remove the copper bracket, then remove the M.2 drive shield. This reveals the four M.2 slots. Depending on what type of M.2 storage you use determines the maximum storage available. Up to four terabytes M.2 PCIe 4 SSD. Up to two terabytes M.2 PCIe 3 SED up to 12 terabytes of M.2 PCIe 3 SSD. To upgrade the memory, pull back the black Maya tape and pull the two pull tabs to lift the memory shield. This will reveal the four sodium slots, up to 128 gigabytes of maximum memory. To remove the battery, pull the plastic pull tab on the battery connector to disconnect the battery connector from the system board. Loosen the five P1 Phillips head captive screws and pull out the battery. The wireless LAN module is removable too. The display bezel has shrunk down on the G9, now offering narrow bezels on all four sides to accommodate the new 16x10 aspect ratio 16-inch display options. This review model has a 16-inch WUXGA 1920x1200 IPS anti-glare display panel. The screen is rated at 100% sRGB and it shows lovely crisp vibrant colours, excellent viewing angles and plenty of brightness rated at 400 nits. Even though it has an anti-glare coating, the screen does get reflective in bright direct sunlight. In normal indoor usage, the display is a joy to use. If you need a better display, HP does offer two 4K options, one with the OLED touchscreen, 400 nits and 100% DCI-P3 colour gamut, plus an IPS panel with 120Hz refresh rate, 500 nits and 100% DCI-P3. Due to its dimensions and weight, most Fury users will connect the G9 to one or two external monitors using one of the many display ports on the workstation. Talking of ports, on the left you'll find the power connector, Two Thunderbolt 4 ports with USB 4 Type-C 40 gigabits per second signaling rate, USB power delivery display port 1.4 HP sleep and charge, one mini display port 2.07, a HDMI 2.1 and a SD 7.0 card reader. On the right we have a Nano Kensington lock, a gigabit RJ45, two super speed USB type A 5 gigabits per second signaling rate, one with charging, a headphone microphone combo jack and a smart card reader. One thing to note is the dual Thunderbolt 4 ports are too close together, especially if you have a USB-C stick in one or both of the ports. Inside there's an Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211 2x2 and Bluetooth 5.2 combo card supporting gigabit data rate. Wireless signal was excellent throughout with a Wi-Fi 6 access point nearby. Bluetooth was also reliable with the external mouse. 
There is an optional 5G WAN card at a time of purchase if you need mobile data on the go. The HP Premium Keyboard is spill resistant, full size and backlit with a numeric keypad. Typing on the Fury G9 is excellent with good travel, good tactile feedback with each key and a quiet typing action. Certain models do have the Z-Lite Space RGB keyboard, giving you full customization of RGB lighting with each key. The point stick found in the G7 and G8 has made way for a larger 3x2 glass touchpad, along with a larger palm rest. This gives a comfortable area for your fingers to glide on the smooth surface area. There are three physical mouse buttons that work well and are reliable. Noise is kept to a minimum with these buttons. Audio is tuned by Bang & Olufsen. There are dual stereo speakers with discrete amps located below the keyboard deck towards the front. Audio is crisp with good mids. There's even some bass to round it off thanks to the 200Hz bass roll off. Sound is good whether you are on a video conference call or listening to some background music while number crunching. The 5 megapixel camera has world facing microphone dual ray digital microphones integrating DAN noise suppression to keep background noise to a minimum. Auto frame focus keeps your head focused during a Zoom or Teams meeting. In general, the video quality is a vast improvement over the usual poor webcams. Color accuracy is not bad, and the AI software does a good job to adapt to the lighting condition. This review model has an Intel Core i7 12800HX up to 4.8 GHz with Intel Turbo Boost technology, 25 MB of L3 cache, 16 cores, 24 threads, based on the Order Lake architecture. TDP is rated at 55 watts. With an additional two performance cores and a higher TDP, the 12800HX is faster than the Intel i9-12900HK, giving it desktop level performance. It also beats the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX and the Intel i9-12900H. If you compare this CPU to last year's 12th gen i9 11950H, benchmark results show a vast jump in multi-core performance. Along with 32GB of DDR5 4800MHz RAM in single channel mode and storage in the form of a 512GB of PCIe NVMe TLC SSD, the Fury G9 flies through applications thrown at it, whether it's content creation, coding or 3D Max rendering. Performance does take a hit when on battery mode. Encoding on Premiere Pro took 1 hour 20 minutes compared to 20 minutes on mains power. Benchmarking results also show excellent scores. Cinebench R23 testing produced a score of 16,935 multi-core and in 1,804 single-core. 3D Mark Time Spy results came in with an overall score of 7,949, CPU score of 12,084, and a graphics score of 7,497. 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme overall came in at 3,817, graphics score of 3,570, and CPU score of 6,292. 3D Mark Speedway Test came in with an overall score of 1,864. PC Mark 10 had an overall score of 6,646. PC Mark 10 Extended had an overall score of 8,117. Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark resulted in a single core score of 1,721 and 11,290 in multi-core. The compute benchmark results came in a score of 94,494. Superposition resulted in a score of 14,538. Spec view per 2020 version 3.1 scores shown here. Here's a comparison with the HP ZBook Studio G9 benchmarking results using an i7-12800H CPU and an RTX 3070 Ti. During light workloads, the fans in the vapor chamber stay virtually silent. Now and again it fires up to keep the i7-12800HX in check. The dual fans spin up when working on a 3D rendering. They do get loud to call the desktop level processor and GPU, but personally I wouldn't say it's crazy loud like a gaming laptop. Temperature wise, the Fury gets to 45 Celsius or 113 Fahrenheit under heavy load near the vents by the display hinges, 41 Celsius or 106 Fahrenheit on top of the keyboard, warm to touch on the chassis near the vents. Due to its large chassis, large vents and the efficient vapour chamber, temperatures are kept in check during heavy tasks. Here's a list of the target audience for the ZBook Fury G9. Architects, engineers and construction managers, Autodesk Rivet, data scientists and analysts using Anaconda, Rapids and TensorFlow, product designers and engineers, Unity, Unreal Engine and Creo, media and entertainment professionals, Adobe Premiere Pro, 
3DS Max and Autodesk Maya, game and VR developers using Unreal Engine and Unity. The G9 has an Intel UHD integrated graphics and in this review model, an NVIDIA RTX A3000 GPU with 12GB of GDDR6 memory. It offers similar performance to the consumer GeForce RTX 3060 but with 4096 CUDA cores and based on the bigger GA104 chip. This a3000 GPU is the 2022 version with more memory and clocked at 14 gigabits instead of the previous 11 gigabits. As always with the Fury range, there are a ton of graphical options available at the time of purchase. Here are the alternative options. The Fury G9 can be used to play a few after hours gaming titles after a long day at the home office. Cyberpunk 2077 can be played in higher 53 frames per second to ultra settings at 43 frames per second. Gameplay is smooth and detailed. Same can be said for the taxing Microsoft Flight Simulator. Excellent detail while flying over London's skyline for example. Forza Horizon 5 has excellent detailing in ultra settings driving down the roads and dirt tracks in smooth frame rates, definitely one you can play most AAA titles. The G9 has an abundance of security features, hardware ones like webcam privacy shutter, fingerprint reader, TPM encryption chip and the Nano Kensington lock. On the software side we have a HP Wolf security for business that creates a hardware enforced always on resilient defence. Others include SureClick secure browser and Sure Recover, giving an automated operating system recovery solution integrated into the hardware and firmware. The G9 has a HP Long Life 8 cell 95 watt hour battery. I managed to get under 4 hours using Adobe Audition. If you dial it down slightly with light general use, it will manage 5 to 6 hours. On heavy workflows, don't expect any more than 1 to 2 hours max. Thanks to the heavy components inside, there is a beefy 230 watt external AC power adapter. Downside, it's heavy and bulky to carry. Plus side, it charges the G9 quickly. Look at 90 minutes to fully charge it. The good, the bad and the really bad. Upgrade options. One of the main selling points of the Fury is the ridiculous levels of sodium and M.2 slots. Four sodium slots for up to 128GB memory and four M.2 slots for maximum 12TB storage. Wealth of ports. You can always guarantee a Fury will not be short of I.O. ports. Two Thunderbolt 4s, two USB Type A's, DisplayPort, HDMI, SD and SC card readers, plus a gigabyte Ethernet port. Try finding these on any modern laptops these days. Vapor Chamber. The cooling and thermal management does a great job of keeping the otherwise hot components at bay. The larger dimensions also aid in keeping the airflow moving around. Chassis Diet. The Fury G9 has slimmed down from the G8 in weight, bezels and curves. However, it's still a big boy to carry around with you. One for keeping at your work desk and carrying another ultra portable for client meetings. Battery consumption. No surprise, battery life was never going to be a strong point of the Fury G9. In fairness, it is sold as a desktop replacement and not an ultra portable laptop. Show me the money. The Fury G9 starts from $1,863 or £2,269 in the UK to over $4,000 before add-ons, one for the corporate expense account to pay for. There's healthy competition in the mobile workstation category. What are the alternatives to the ZBook Fury G9? In no particular order, here's some to consider. Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 1. Dell Position 7670. MSI Raider GE67HX. Asus ProArt Studio Book Pro 16 OLED. The HP ZBook Fury G9 has shaved a little off the weight, screen bezels and chassis curves, but still manages to squeeze more performance from the updated components without compromising on thermals, number of ports available and upgrade options. The i7-12800HX is a CPU beast married to faster DDR5 memory and PCIe Gen 4x4 M.2 SSDs. The poor webcam in the past has finally been upgraded to a decent 5 megapixel version. The keyboard is still excellent to type on and the larger glass touchpad you can argue is preferable to a click point nib. Naturally for the very best mobile workstation slash desktop replacement there's a pretty price to pay but there's no doubt the ZBook Fury G9 is still king. What do you guys think? Leave your comments and discuss below. Hope you guys enjoyed the review of the HP ZBook Fury 16 G9 laptop. Please click on the like button if you enjoyed this review video and subscribe if you would like to watch more of our tech videos. Thanks for watching. Cheers.